Hi everyone, welcome to Unacademy. Unacademy is India's largest learning platform. If you haven't already, I hope that you take the chance to like our YouTube channel called Unacademy Chess Global. Please make sure to subscribe and also click the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Uh, my name is Lisa Orlova. I'm a woman candidate master, and today we will be talking about material advantage and specifically queen trades. Uh, at this point in your chess life, I would hope that uh, you were taught when you have more material, more points than your opponent, that you should trade pieces. Now, trading pieces is really important because you are eliminating your opponent's army. So especially if you trade the higher ranked pieces, uh, like knights, bishops, rooks, queens, you are, you are taking away some of the strong members of any future attacks that can be on your king. Now, why are we focusing on queen trades today? Well, the queen is a very, very powerful piece. And if we keep our opponent's queen on the board, they can create attacks. And a uh, queen is the strongest attacker. And a lot of the times in some sort of attack, the queen is the most important piece. And if you can trade that piece off, the attack might be less, well, I mean, it might be less strong or it might even completely vanish. The attack might vanish completely. So let's take a look at the first example uh, here. So let's analyze the position first before we dive into anything. First, we need to see, uh, does white have a material advantage? We can actually notice that white has two extra pawns here. Uh, the easiest way to just calculate points is if you just, um, is if you cancel out pieces that are the same. So for example, queen and queen. So we don't have to uh, really think about that. Rook versus rook, knight versus knight. And then we're left with black having four pawns versus white having six pawns. So here in this position, uh, before we even go into uh, the specific queen trading move, we have to distinguish, is black threatening anything? Now, taking a look at black's pieces, all of black's strong pieces are really close to our king. The rook is controlling the f-file, the knight's putting pressure on h2 and also controlling f2. The queen is actually also eyeing h2. So currently in this position, uh, currently in this position, uh, black is threatening to do checkmate. Now, we have to, of course, figure out a way to stop this. There are, of course, uh, a few different moves um, that we can make to stop queen takes h2 checkmate, uh, but the best of all is a queen trade. Now, we're going to go over all of the examples. So queen takes h2 is a problem. Now, uh, one, of, one of the most obvious, in my opinion, is to stop checkmate is to play pawn to g3 because this blocks off the diagonal and now the queen cannot get to h2 and do checkmate. Another thing is that the queen is also potentially guarding the second rank and the h2 pawn. The problem is with this move is actually that maybe some problems with rook f2 can arise. I actually don't prefer this move for black um, at the moment, but in this position, Black can just capture this pawn on e4. And then we are now only up one pawn, which means that it does make it a lot harder to, to win when you only have one pawn because uh, there's a lot of chances, there's a lot of draw chances 
um, in the future for black if you're only up a pawn. So we don't really want to give up a pawn if we don't have to. There are two ways uh, that we can use the queen to try to stop the checkmate. Now, uh, my, my students who have done this example with me, uh, some of them have chosen this move, queen to d6. Now, queen d6 is actually, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it is a really good move here. It's, it's a really, really good move here because it actually, the queen protects the h2 pawn through the black queen. The only reason why I don't really like this idea, and oh, and I forgot to mention as well that we are creating a fork. So we're, we're we are trying to uh, trade the queens in a more forceful way. Why I don't like this way of trying to trade queens because black can actually maybe stop the queen trade by playing queen d8. Of course, uh, of course, this move queen uh, sorry queen e8. Um, of course, this move is weakening the queen's mobility. It's placing the queen on the back rank, but. But the problem is that we were really focusing on queen trades. And if we keep black's pieces, strong pieces on the board, uh, we can accidentally miss something. There's a much better move here, which forces the queen trade. Because queen d6 seems like it forces the queen trade, but it doesn't. So in this position, what we can do is we can play queen to d4. There's actually multiple different moves that we can make. We can play also queen c3 because the knight is defending the queen. But the idea of playing queen d4 is that the king and the queen are on the same diagonal and we can create a pin which does force the trade of queens. So after this move, I mean black cannot play queen takes h2 because in chess you are not allowed to give up the king so this is an absolute pin which means that the queen absolutely cannot move so after queen d4 uh let's say queen takes queen takes d4 uh i mean in this position we actually have two different ways to to capture Rook takes d4 or knight takes d4. I like both of them, and it is totally up to you which one you prefer. I know that some people in this position would prefer to do uh, to play knight takes uh, d4 just because to leave the rook onto uh, on the first rank. Uh, but some others would like to play rook uh, rook takes d4 just to get the rook involved in the game. Um, and possibly maybe get the rook onto the seventh rank. So rook takes and knight takes d4 are both really good moves here. Okay, let's go on to the next example. Okay, so here uh, let's distinguish. Let's distinguish uh, what type of material advantage does black have. Uh, if we cancel out the pieces, so uh, queen and queen, so we don't have to uh, we don't have to count those as points. Rook versus rook, knight versus knight, bishop versus bishop. And then how many pawns does black have? Black has one, two, three, four, five versus four pawns. So black is up one pawn. Uh, I know that one pawn doesn't seem like too much of an advantage, but when it comes to grandmasters, one pawn is enough. And even for players of expert level, and even uh, like my level, master strength, uh, I'm I'm a more of a lower ranked master, but uh, still master regardless. And even at my level, you know, just being up one point should be more than enough to win the game. So here we need to take a look at what is the problem. What's the problem for black? Well. Look at this battery that white has created. They've put the queen and the rook on the h file, and now there are two different threats. There is the threat of queen h8 checkmate and also queen h7 checkmate. So for example, 
if black defends against one of the checkmates, the problem is that there is another one that we have to be worried about. Um, one of my students, uh, he, he actually mentioned, how about we play pawn f6 or pawn f5? Now, pawn f6 and pawn f5 seems like a pretty good idea because you're giving a uh, room for your king to breathe. So he can try to escape from uh, one of these checks. The only problem is with this move is that this bishop, this bishop is actually looking towards the king. And if we play pawn f5 here, the bishop is going to capture and it will lead to checkmate. This black rook will have to block because that's the only move. And then queen h8 is still going to be checkmate. So in this position, what can black think about doing? It doesn't seem like he has uh, too many good moves to make. But luckily, there is one that saves the game, and that is queen trades. So after queen goes to g5, we force the queen trade using a fork. I hope you have noticed um, through, throughout like this and the previous example that we're actually using tactics to trade the pieces. So in the previous example, we were using the absolute pin. So pins, uh, we usually do pins to maybe win material or to uh, stop a piece from moving uh, or being able to move. Uh, but see, in the second example, we're actually using a fork. We're using a fork to trade pieces. Uh, it's kind of interesting actually how um, we use tactics not just to win material but also to trade pieces so please keep in mind about that so queen g5 check and in this position uh, sadly white cannot stop the trade uh, after queen takes and by the way white does not have to capture they can wait to be captured but for example after queen takes Knight takes, uh, sorry, knight takes g5, and in this position, there is no more checkmate. See, once we've traded off the queens, basically, white's attack is gone. I'm, I'm not saying that black shouldn't be careful. Black should be thinking in this position to give a little bit more space to the king at some point, uh, just to give uh, a little bit of breathing room. And of course, this is really close to an end game, or I would actually say that this is already an end game. And kings are actually really important to be moved towards the center. So g6, move the king up, and then start using the pieces to help. Another idea is that maybe we could even trade our bishop here to create double pawns and a really bad pawn structure or white. Let's look at the third example. Okay. S first of all, let's take a look at uh, if black has a material advantage. So I always like to, as I said, cancel out pieces to make it a lot easier for, uh, for us to calculate. So queen, queen, rook, rook, knight, knight, bishop, bishop, and I'm just saying this because they're all worth the same amount of points, right? I mean, queen and queen is worth the same amount of points, rook and rook, and etc. So, and then we're left with, uh, we're left with white having two pawns versus black having four pawns. So black is up two pawns currently, or two points. Uh, this position also looks uh, really interesting. There's a lot of pieces that have been... Uh, uh, traded off of the board uh, but there's a problem with black's king the king is really open and even though white's king is open too as you can see there's only really one piece that's putting uh, putting some pressure on the white's king while on our king there is the queen putting pressure there is the bishop putting pressure um, yeah, and, and the knight is also coming in uh, potentially next turn. Now, what is specifically white threatening right now? Well, white is threatening queen g7 checkmate. Now, there are a few different ways for black to try to defend against the checkmate, but the problem is that some of them lead to checkmate. So, for example, uh, we do have to defend against queen g7 
check. Uh, checkmate. So let's say queen d7. So the queen moves here and protects the g7 square. So after this move, white actually has a forced checkmate. And, and that's with the help of the bishop. The bishop and the queen are going to help each other to achieve checkmate. Now, how is checkmate achieved? Queen h8, check. The queen is protected by the bish uh, bishop, and remember, kings can never capture uh, protected pieces. They, they're not allowed to give themselves up. The king goes to f7. Queen goes to g7 check. The king must go to e6, and now white has achieved the checkmate. And you could see that it's checkmate because uh, here in this position, the knight is guarding off um, the, the square on d5. This pawn is guarding off e5. The queen is guarding off a lot of the other squares. And uh, see, our own queen is in the way. Is in the way. Okay, let's take a look at uh, maybe, let's take a look at another move. So here, let's take a look at uh, queen e7. Now, the reason why I don't like queen e7 is because in this position, um, in this position, there could be a lot of problems even with, uh, with something like knight to, knight takes f5. Knight takes f5 is adding another attacker, um, in, in white's attack, because before it was mostly the queen and the bishop that was targeting the king. But now that the knight captures on f5, white now has a third attacker coming into play. And take notice here that this bishop on c3 is doing a really, really good job and defending uh, the square on e1. So black cannot play queen e1 check, hoping to checkmate white first. So after knight takes f5, yes, in this position, uh, maybe w black can play queen to h7 to try to trade off the queens. But the problem is here, after the queen trade, white actually gained back two of their pawns. So now the position is equal, and we don't, we don't know actually who is going to potentially win this game. It all depends on uh, who plays better, whose pieces are better, and um, I mean, now white has a lot of chances of potentially drawing the position and maybe even winning it. And we don't want that to happen, of course. Let's take a look at one more example of just protecting against uh, the checkmating square. There's also rook e7 that protects the, the checkmate. But... But the problem is with this move is that when the move when the rook moved to e7 it stopped protecting the queen and the king and the queen are on the same line so now in this position after rook goes to e7 uh white can actually just simply win the queen so you might ask well what are we gonna do well we need to find a queen trade because otherwise black uh, I mean, isn't doing so well, or or they will get into a draw-ish position. So, after, uh, in this position, what we can do is we can, we, we notice that the king and the queen are on the same line. We can play queen h4 check now. Now, after queen h4 check, we are forcing the trade of queens, because we're creating a fork, and we're creating a royal fork. In this position, white has to trade, and after knight takes h4, the knight defends this pawn. The rook is now attacking uh, the, the knight on e3. Please keep in mind that the rook was attacking the knight on e3, but since there was a uh, checkmate, there was a threat of checkmate, we had to forget about the fact that the knight was under attack. Uh, because obviously checkmate is more important than the knight. But after this queen trade, the knight protects this pawn, and now... Black is just up two pawns, and, and hopefully they should win.
win this game. Of course, anything can happen, but by just trading off the queens, white's attack is now gone. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite examples. And the reason why I really like it is because... Um, the reason why I really like it is because it's kind of a thinking outside of the box type of queen trade. Uh, but first of all, let's, let's take a look at why, uh, white has a material advantage. Why do they have more points? So let's cancel out queen versus queen versus queen, rook versus rook, knight versus knight. And then white is left with one, two, three, four, five, six, six pawns versus Black's two pawns. So white is up four pawns here. Should be winning. The only problem is that actually black's pieces are, are working really, really well together to create an attack on the white's king. Well, currently in this position, actually, the white queen's under attack. But I'm just stating the fact that because the queen... Uh, you know, the knight is looking in this direction and the rook is looking in this direction. Black is playing super aggressively because they know that they're down material and if they do nothing, then they won't really win. They, I mean, they, they won't be able to win if they, if they sit there and do nothing. So here, um, what is Black threatening to do? Well, currently speaking, threatening to capture the queen, but also threatening a smothered mate. So... Why can't white capture the knight? Well, actually, the pawn on h3 is pinned. So if we capture the knight, we're going to lose our queen. And even though a rook and a knight plus four pawns shouldn't be so bad, the queen is still stronger. And I believe that the queen has a lot more chances of winning because the queen, the queen's mobility is is huge compared to... Uh, all of the rest of the pieces and queens are really good at a lot of the different tactics like forks pins skewers you know discovered attacks and just a lot of different types of tactics and and that's actually why i'm doing this lesson because that's why you guys should be scared of the queen and that's why when you're up material you should be thinking about queen traits now please please keep in mind i'm not telling you to chase the queen around the board um, if the, if the opportunity arises to trade queens, or maybe if you, you, you can set up, uh, you can set up a few move combination, right, to, to try to trade queens. But I'm not talking about trying to chase the queen all around the board, um, and wasting moves, potentially. Um, if, if the queen trade arises, then definitely go for it. So here, um, the queen's under attack, and we need to figure out about this knight f2 checkmate. The two moves, the two safe moves that I see with the queen is queen g3 and also queen d6. Now, um, here, I do want to go over the first one first. I want to go over queen g3 first. What is the problem with queen g3? Uh, I mean, the queen is now not in trouble, but the problem here is that black can actually get away with a tie. And keep in mind that when you are the losing side, you're not always trying to think about playing uh, only aggressively to try to win the game. Uh, you are also playing aggressively to try to tie the game. I feel like a lot of people, especially when they start off chess, they think that when they're down material, they have to play aggressively. They have to sacrifice more pieces to complicate the position. I mean, it is a good idea to do that, but not always, you know? I mean, sometimes you just need to go with a draw. I know a draw doesn't sound as great as, as winning, but a draw is definitely better than losing. So in this position, black can get away with a draw via perpetual check. So they can play knight f2 check, king goes to h2, knight g4 check, and back and forth. And once you copy the position three times, um, black can claim a draw. The reason why I'm saying black can claim a draw is because, of course, white wants to win. 
Uh, so they're definitely not going to be the ones claiming a draw. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the, the next uh, safe move for the queen. Queen d6. Okay, so queen d6 also seems uh, like a completely normal move. Uh, but the problem is, once again, because of perpetual check. And uh, the difference, by the way, in the position with queen g3 is actually now this square is vacant, which means that maybe the king can try to come out. But I do not recommend, and I will show you why, the king should not come out um, to try to get away from the checks. So in this position, after queen d6 check, uh, no, not check, sorry. After queen d6, now black can play knight f2 check, just like the previous example, king h2, knight g4 check. And now, of course, if black goes, uh, sorry, white goes back to h1, black can just continue and do perpetual check. Now, you might be wondering, well, what happens if the king tries to escape from the checks? Uh, this is a huge problem because now there are two different checkmate in ones for black. Actually, trying to escape from the checks is losing for white because of queen f2 checkmate or queen e3 checkmate. So you guys might be wondering, well, well then what can we do? I mean, the queen only has two safe moves and we've distinguished that those two safe moves for the queen lead to a draw. So what are we gonna do? Well, there's a really interesting way of trading. Now this, this doesn't happen too often in games, but I'm showing you guys this example because it, it's really the, the one that you have to think outside of the box. It's very unusual, but it's a very creative way on trading queens. So in this position, what white can do is they can play queen to b8 check. Now, after queen b8 check, excuse me. So now after queen b8 check, the king has to capture. Because otherwise, uh, I mean... Uh, remember, if the king is under attack, there is a way, running away, block or capture. When a piece is this close to the king, you cannot block. When a piece is, uh, the, I mean, yeah, you can't block. You, you also can't run away because the queen is guarding off all of the squares. So the only thing that black can do is to capture. And now notice, the queen and the king are on... On the same color square, which means that this knight can come in and do a royal fork. This is a very interesting way of trading queens. You give up a queen, but then you do a fork to gain it back. Very, very beautiful. I remember when I first looked at this position, I was just like, oh, this is great. This, uh, I was so shocked when I first saw this. So after, after this fork, king comes out, we capture the queen, and now black's attack is gone. Why is it gone? Well, if they try to play knight f2, king h2, trying to do the checks over and over again, the king now can escape. And why can he escape? Because the queens are gone. The queen was the most valuable, uh, it was the strongest attacker. And in before we traded queens, right, remember, we couldn't move the king out because uh, we got checkmated. But now that the queens are off of the board, White just simply has an easy way to win. A very, very easy way to win. Okay. Let us do uh, just one more example. One more example. Okay. So uh, I do I do want to state that like very recently uh, I did a stream with uh, woman grandmaster Sabina and she showed me this game. Um, uh, it was woman grandmaster Sabina Foyser versus uh, one second let me Fish Bean Alexander who is a grandmaster. Okay, um, in this position let's take a look at um, what's going on. So Sabina's playing white, and uh, let's take a look at the material advantage. So 
There is queen, queen, rook, rook, uh, knight, knight, bishop, bishop. Oh, okay. So we can actually take a look here that white has a rook for a bishop. So white is actually already up exchange. Um, they are up exchange. So this should be more than enough, especially for two, uh, when, when, when a strong player is up in exchange. Uh, it should be more than enough to win. Uh, but of course, of course, it all still depends on the position because just because you have extra points, it doesn't mean all the time that you are going to win. So here, um, Black's position isn't very good, but as you can see, some of his pieces are working uh, quite well. This bishop's in the center. The knight is also looking towards and is currently attacking the rook, which comes with check if the knight is able to capture it. Uh, another thing is that, see, this queen and bishop are looking towards uh, this pawn on g4. And um, if this pawn is lost, uh, there might be a chance that, there might be a chance that black will have some counterplay or have some sort of attacking chances. So in this position, um, it, it might seem obvious here to play for to play queen h8. But the problem is that knight takes h3 comes with check. So if we do this trade, queen h8 check, king goes to e7, queen takes c8, black does not have to capture right away. They can capture the rook on h3 with check first and then capture back the, the white queen. And actually, at that point, uh, black has achieved... Uh, I mean, almost an equal position. I think they're going to be down one pawn, if I'm not mistaken. But still, one pawn is honestly not bad. Not bad at all. No, actually, wait, wait, wait a second. No, no, no. Even okay. See, I, I sometimes even make mistakes. So in this position, it would be even, even, uh, pretty bad, because. Um, in this position, actually, if we play king g2 to attack the knight, the knight will go back to f4 check, and then black will capture. And actually, black is going to be up a, a, a full knight, uh, sorry, or a full bishop at that point. So actually, this is even worse than I thought. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, what can white do here? There's a very beautiful, beautiful way to trade queens. It's very, 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 very nice. Um, remember, in this position, the reason why white is trading queens is because they're up material, and it's just because, uh, there's no straightforward win here for, for, for white, and there, there might be chances for black to do something, and especially since our rook on h3 is currently under attack. Um, in this position, Sabina found a really, really great move. Queen takes f4. You guys might be thinking, well, what is this? Queen takes f4. Um, it's just giving up a queen. Actually, this move opens up the e-file. So, uh, this is another interesting queen trade, where you sacrifice your queen for the knight, but then you do win the queen back using a discovered check. So, after this, uh, I believe what was played in the game, bishop e6, bishop takes c8, rook takes c8, Rook d3 with some ideas of actually attacking this super weak uh, pawn on c6. And eventually, uh, Sabina won this game. So I hope all of you uh, really enjoyed today's lesson. And I hope this really benefited. And uh, I mean, in future games, I really hope that you decide to think about queen trades. Because remember, just to summarize the lesson, the reason why we do queen trades when we're up material is because, well, number one is just trading. When you trade, you're eliminating your opponent's army, especially if you're trading their strong, strong pieces. Now, why are we trading queens? Well, queens are usually the, the strongest piece in the attack. And a lot of the time when you trade the queen, the attack is gone. It's not always the case, but I'm saying a lot of the time it can be the case. So I hope everyone enjoyed this.
I hope you have a great day. And please make sure that you follow us again on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, click the bell icon for updates. And also please do download our Unacademy uh, learning app on iOS and Android. Have an amazing one. Bye.